Hi! In this video, you will get to know the idea of how to use statistical shape modeling and which steps are necessary to create such a model. To illustrate this, a simplistic example is used to build a statistical shape model. If you want to know more about statistical shape models, you can find a link to slides about SSMs below. Let's have a look at the three relevant classes which are imported. The general procrastes analysis is used to scale and translate the shapes and then create the mean shape. After this, the principal component analysis extracts the principal modes of variation. Now, the class active shape model uses the information about the mean shape and the principal modes of variation to create a statistical shape model. Let's have a look at the code. At the beginning, a few parameters have to be defined. The number of training samples, which in practice would be a lot higher. Here, only two shapes are used as they function as a simplistic example. The number of sampling points for a shape, the dimension, spacing and shift to the center of the images, and two parameters to generate two different shapes. Now, two grids are created with these parameters. If you are unsure about how to use grids, have a look at the basic video about them. Next, two different trapezoids are generated by the method createTrap. This method uses the parameter d to create a trapezoid between the points minus 100 minus 100, 100 minus 100, minus d100 and d100. The trapezoid consists of 400 points on the outline. The value of the grid at the positions of these points is set to 1. Run the code to see the two shapes. In medical image processing, geometric shapes aren't usually used but for example images of hearts or livers. Now, two matrices are created and filled row-wise with the points forming the two trapezoids. After these preparations, the first step to create the model is to generate the mean shape. To do so, Create a GPA object. And add the two shapes. Now run the GPA. and get the mean shape as a matrix. Next, a grid is created from the mean shape matrix. Run the code again to see the mean shape. The GPA object not only contains the mean shape, but also the scaled and shifted points. These points are needed for the principal component analysis to calculate the modes of variation. To get the points in the needed structure, create the data matrix from the GPA.
Then create the PCA object with this data matrix as a parameter. And run the PCA. After this, the number of principal components can be calculated by using the eigenvalues of the PCA. Finally, get the actual model by creating an active shape model object with the PCA as a parameter. This model consists of the mean shape and the principal components as modes of variation and thus can be given weights to generate new shapes, varying in the directions of the principal components. To see this, different weights are used. Starting with the weights 1 and 0, a new shape is created and then converted to a grid. The same is done for the weight 0 and 200. and the weights 0 and 0, which should generate the mean shape. Run the code a last time to see the different shapes. As expected, the weight 0, 0 created the mean shape again. The other two weight pairs generated two new shapes. Now you have seen a simplistic example of how to create a statistical shape model. If you want to, you can play around with the weights yourself.